Uh, hi everyone, tonight I want to look at a standard uh, tension problem. We have a stoplight here with a weight of 100 newtons as shown here in the diagram. I want to find the tension in each wire. So I'll show you how to set this problem up and how to solve uh, the equations that we're going to get. This is a two-dimensional problem, so we have to set up two equations and then solve for the two unknowns. So let's see how we do that. Okay, so here's the problem. We have a stoplight, 100 newtons. I want to find the tension on each side. The angles are different on each side. So we start off, if it's not moving, it's in equilibrium, which means that the sum of the forces, and that's a vector, have to be equal to zero. That's going to mean two things. That's going to mean that the sum of the forces along the x direction have to be equal to zero, and the sum of the forces along the y direction also have to be equal to zero. Now I haven't even written what x and y direction is, but I'm going to use just the standard coordinate system. Everything pointing to the right is in the positive x direction. Everything pointing up is in the positive y direction. So the next step, free body diagram. Let's represent this entire stoplight with a single point. It has a weight acting down. The magnitude of the weight is mg. And in this case, I know it's 100 newtons. What else? There's a wire that's connected here, and it makes an angle of 40 degrees. We're going to call this tension over here, tension T1. And again, I know the angle. Let's call this theta1. Now, there's also another wire on the other side. It goes up here. We're going to call this tension T2. And the angle that it makes with respect to uh, the horizontal is angle theta 2. Okay, I'm going to do one more step now. Since I have my coordinate system down over here on the right, what I want to do now is I'm going to redraw the free body diagram, except I'm going to break down all the forces into x and y components the way I have it here. So the weight is very easy to do. The weight doesn't change. It's simply mg acting down. Instead of doing my tension T1 along this axis, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break the tension down into two components. Tension T1 is going to have an x component, T1x, and it's also going to have a y component. I'll just draw the y component here. Doesn't matter where you draw it. T1y. T1x, immediately you should be able to write, since it's, this is T1 on the hypotenuse, this here's the angle theta1. That means that T1x has to be T1 cos of the angle theta1. Make sure you understand that part. Tension T1y, the y component of the tension, has to be T1 sine of the angle theta1. And let's just put that angle theta1 in here just to remind ourselves. Perfect. Now, tension T2 acts along this direction. Tension T2, again, I can break down into two components going to have a x component and it's also going to have a y component t2y the components are going to look pretty similar to these ones except the angles are going to be different so t2y simply going to be equal to t2 sine of theta 2 and t2x simply going to be equal to t2 cos of theta 2. And again, theta 2, let's just put it in our diagram just to clean it up. Theta 2. All right, that's it. We're almost done now. We have to go back to our equations. So I'm going to call equation 1 the sum of the forces in the x direction. Let's add up all the forces in the x direction. And you have to add them up as vectors here. So I have a vector t1x that's acting, or that's to the right. And I have T2x, that's to the left. So when you really add them up, you have to do it this way. T1x is T1 cos of theta 1 minus T2 cos of theta 2. And this here has to be equal to 0. There is no acceleration along the x direction. What about number 2? Let's add up all the forces in the y direction. Here we have T1 sine of theta 1. We also have T2 
sine of theta 2, both of these forces are acting in the positive y direction. And we have the weight of the object that's acting down. So you have to uh, do a negative sign. Mg, this here has to be equal to 0. All right, we have two equations here, and we only have two unknowns. The only unknowns are t1 and t2. We know the angles, and we know the weight. So all you have to do is do a little bit of algebra in order to simplify these equations. So let's start with equation one. I'm gonna start by bringing this, first, uh, this second term here on the other side, and I'm gonna isolate for T2. So you should get that, let's do that right here. T1, cos of theta one, has to be equal to T2, cos of theta two. So at the end, let me isolate T2, simply going to be equal to I'll start by writing the angular terms, cos of theta 1 divided by cos of theta 2, multiplied by t1. All right, so here's my first expression. Again, you know both angles. You can chuck, uh, put that in your calculator and figure out what this number here in the bracket is. However, let's go back to equation 2 now. If I substitute t2 into equation 2, I can get an equation only in terms of t1, and that's really what I want to do here. So let's do that. This is t1 sine of theta 1. This term doesn't change. Plus, now instead of writing t2, I'm going to write this entire thing that I just found. Now it looks kind of messy, but it's not bad. Cos of theta 1 divided by cos of theta 2. Now I can't forget couple things. I can't forget the t1 and I can't forget the sine of theta 2. So let me just write this. Sine of theta 2 and I don't want to forget the t1. Now I'm going to bring the mg on the other side because at the end of the day my goal is to solve for t1. Alright this looks a little bit messy. However these are just numbers. Sine of theta 1 I can punch that in the calculator. This whole term over here I can punch that in the calculator and I know the weight. So at the end I'm simply going to isolate this for t1 I'm going to write it as mg. I like to hold off punching in the numbers all the way to the end. Because sometimes things simplify, sometimes they don't, but a lot of times things simplify. All right, so here we have sine theta 1 plus, look what I can do also here. I have sine of theta 2 and cos of theta 2. I can combine those just to simplify that expression a little bit and write it as tangent of theta 2. But you still have this guy, cos of theta 1 and tangent of theta 2. Alright, here's the second equation. Now we can actually solve for everything. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and punch in all the numbers in the calculator. So theta 1 is 40 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degrees and not radians. Theta 2 is 60 degrees. And the weight mg is equal to 100 newtons. All right, if you do the algebra correctly, you punch stuff in your calculator correctly, you should get this. Tension T1, I think I got 50, approximately 50.8 newtons. And T2 is equal to what? I think I got 77.8. So here's the solution I got for uh, both tensions. What I like to do is I like to check my answer at the end. Let's do a what if scenario. Maybe I do it in the box down here. What do you think would happen if the angle was 45 on each side? If it was 45 on each side, do a what if. Theta 1 equals to theta 2 equals to 45 degrees. What you would find here is that cos of 45 and cos of 45, that would cancel out. So you get T1 equals to T2. And at the end, if you substitute everything, sine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. It's also equal to cos of 45, square root of 2 over 2. Tangent of 45 is 1. So you get that T1 is equal to mg divided by square root of 2. All right, so there you have it, folks. That's a simple tension problem involving equilibrium. The steps are always the same. Number one, free body diagram. Number two, pick a coordinate system. What are you going to call x direction? What are you going to call y direction? 
Number three, break the forces down into the components that you have for your coordinate system. Step four, add all the forces and make sure they equal to zero. Now step five, you simply solve for the unknowns. In this case, it was T1 and T2. You have to do a little bit of algebra. There's no way around it. All right, hope that helped you. If you liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, send me some comments and questions. I'll be happy to help you.